Oh yeah, it's the weekend, and you know what that means. It's time for Pixels and Bits on TheOverShield.com with your hosts, Corey, Manny, and Tommy. And now, broadcasting from planet Earth, it's time for Pixels and Bits. Pixels and Bits, episode 61. I'm here with one of my co-hosts, Manny. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And what was probably one of the most slurred intros ever, it's the Andrew and Manny Show, part two. Hopefully, it won't fall in line of other sequels, and it will still be as good as the original. I think we have something going here, man. I know. You know, maybe the truth is we just kick the other members out because <laughs> we want to confuse you guys with our voices. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for the remainder of the podcast, if you like, I could just, uh, you know, talk like this. Try to, uh, <laughs> sound manly. I don't know if it'll work. No, I don't think so. I, I think what we had going on was working out, so. Oh. All right, then. So just real quick before we get into the game news, I just wanted to hit on different things that are going to be hitting the site pretty soon. I just want to let everyone know. On Monday, there will be a special edition of Niker Plays, which is Niker and Dax Play. The inaugural episode will be of a Super Nintendo classic called Sunset Riders. Other than that, there will be a review hit the site t- today, or when this comes out as of yesterday, called Dat Review of OMG Zombies. And another review is going to be hitting the site of a puzzle game called Hex Cells Plus, voiced by Karen, who hasn't been on the site in about 93 years. But, <laughs> but as far as I know, that's, that's about it. There may be some other thing, random things popping up here and now and again, so you'll just have to stay tuned to see. But with that being said, are you ready, Manny? As I'll ever be. Alright, so let's go to the news segment. Hit our music. <laughs> Perfect. So I have three news stories. I do, I do, I do. My first Ooh. news story is for Grand Theft Auto 4. All right, Grand Theft Auto 4 gets a Flappy Bird mod. Ooh. Modders mesh popular mobile game with Rockstar's open world title Grand Theft Auto 4. The results are fan. According to not GameSpot, <laughs> it was bound <laughs> to happen eventually. A new mod has brought the worlds of Flappy Bird and Grand Theft Auto together at last, and the results are incredible. YouTuber user... Taligult published a video today highlighting the creation of modders Julian B and Quenches 13, wherein the rules of Flappy Bird are applied to Grand Theft Auto. So basically, you if you run into something, like if you get run into a bench in Grand Theft Auto, you die. Whoa. Well, yeah, because it's Flappy Bird. You can't hit anything. Yeah, yeah. It's basically turning Grand Theft Auto 4 into like super hardcore mode. Hmm. So that's awesome and free, so go check that out. Alright. I got two more. Nintendo okay. is killing the online support for Mario Kart Wii and Super Smash Bros. Brawl in May. For Ooh. online matchmaking. I agree. You would think that they would, you know, still keep these going, considering Brawl is probably one of the Wii's most uh, played games. And, so, you know, for that matter, so is Mario Kart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I understand that they have the Wii U out, but it just seems kind of silly to me. Yeah. And in fact... Not good for the fans. And in fact, those are only just the, um... 
just the Wii games, or the big ones. There are other games being affected by this too that are going to be going offline soon. Oh, like their COD series? Okay, so these are just some of them. Animal Crossing, Wild World, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, Legend of Zelda, Metroid Prime Hunters, Picross 3D, Pokemon Black, Pokemon Black 2, Pokemon Diamond, Pokemon Heart Gold, Pokemon Pearl, Pokemon Soul Silver, Pokemon White, Professor Layton games, and those are all the DS games. As for Wii, Animal Crossing City Life, Endless Ocean, Mario Kart Wii, as I said, Mario Kart Sports Mix, Super Smash Bros. Brawl, Samurai Warriors 3, Dr. Mario Online, WarioWare, Mario Pokemon Ranch, and a whole bunch of others that will be being shut down soon. No more online support. Why, Nintendo? Why? <laughs> because Nintendo hates their fans. That's just... Oh, man. No more online... Well, I mean, to be fair, was there really ever online play to begin with? Yeah, but I mean, for games like Animal Crossing, that's kind of essential. Yeah, that's true. Alright, in my final news story, and then we'll get to your news stories, there's this thing going on on Twitch. It's called Twitch Plays Pokemon. Have you heard about this phenomenon, Manny? I have, and it's definitely catching on. Well, they're in the home stretch. Pokemon, or Twitch Plays Pokemon, has gotten all the gym badges. And is now. No way! Yep, and they're now on their way to beating the game. No one has seen this coming. Basically, if you don't know what Pokemon or Pokemon blah, blah, Twitch plays Pokemon is, imagine a giant board with over fifty thousand people at the same time trying to control one character. It's madness. Right <laughs> now, it is live. Right now, and there are fifty thousand people playing as they go on to Victory Road. Re that is crazy, man. That is super crazy. I mean, how do you expect to get anything done? <laughs> Last time I checked, they were stuck inside of a Pokemon Center. Mm. Anyways, that's my few tidbits of news. What do you got for us, Manny? I have nothing. And that is because um, I was in the middle of trying to find stories of people doing stupid shit. So... Um, at least I got us covered in that section of the podcast. Manny, Manny, Manny. <laughs> Manny, Manny, Manny. What you doing? What shall we do? I, I have no idea. I have <laughs> no idea what's up with that. All right, then. All right, then. So I guess that means we'll move on to our middle segment, which, if you know me and podcast, Manny. There's always, which I absolutely don't. You absolutely <laughs> don't. There's always a surprise middle segment. Not including the one we already talked about. So get, <gasps> oh, wow. get prepared for Andrew's Stupid Games. When this, fir when this podcast first started, I subjected Corey and other people to this game we're about to play right now, Manny. And oh, and what is that? Okay, basically... It's a name game. What we're gonna we're gonna be going on PlayStation Two games, okay? okay? And the object is: I say a game, you say a game, I say a game, you say a game, and the first person to stutter loses. Oh, this is fun! All right. So, just I'll say it right now, and it'll actually be a handicap on myself. Sports games don't count because I'm not gonna be like Madden 2005, Madden 2006. <laughs> of course. All right. So, with that being said, are you ready? And oh, you know yeah. What, you know what? Actually, let's say this. How about no sequels? So, let's say if I say Resident Evil 4, you can't be like, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Okay, fair enough. All right. So, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Sure, I'll get it started. All right. The Bouncer. Kingdom Hearts. Tech and Tag. Final Fantasy X. Oh shit! I was gonna say Dragon's Dogma. Ugh. Whoa! Thanks for playing. <laughs> See, I was stuck at this. Sorry. No. Um. Ring of Red. No, you you already you already stopped. We can go two oh, out of what? three though. Okay, fair enough. You, I mean, you 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 hesitated. 
I did. All right, I this did. time, this time I'll go first. Okay. Kill zone. Star Wars Battlefront. Gun. Shit! Oh my god! <laughs> this is harder than what I thought, man. Well, thanks. Because I keep playing. wanting to scream PS3 games. So. I mean, do you want to go? You want to try PS3 games real quick? Okay, sure. Why not? All right, you are you have the advantage over me greatly in this category. Oh well, that's not fun. No, go ahead. Go ahead. You know what? Let's let's just let you win one, Manny. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, same You know what? No. Okay. Same rules, no All sports right. games, no sequels. And Fair enough. because I'm probably going to lose, I'm going to go first, so I can at least get one out. Okay. The Last of Us. Ooh. Battlefield Bad Company 2. Remember me. Uh oh shit, I'm stuttering again. <laughs> Is a lot harder. How, how far did you and Corey and Tommy get when you were doing well, this? Well, when we did it, we did Pokemon, and I think we went three or four times around. And I think Corey won. I don't remember. You'll have to. It was um, watch the pod, listen to the podcast with no whacking on it. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's all we got for Andrew's stupid games today. And Manny's not very good at memory games. Hey, it was a surprise in my defense. So it next was. time when. When we do this, I will be ready. All right. All right. So, and now the real middle segment. I love Kingdom Hearts. I believe Manny has a strange fondness for Kingdom Hearts where he rubs it on his nipples repeatedly. So we <laughs> wanted to talk about Kingdom Hearts. Hey, we agreed we wouldn't discuss this. <laughs> well, you know me and surprises. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Kingdom Hearts... Now, with Kingdom Hearts 3 being announced and there's being the trailer, it gets you thinking, like, what what worlds, first off, let's just talk about that. If you could have an ideal world for Kingdom Hearts 3, or maybe a different a few worlds, what would it be, Manny? What would, where would you want to go? Well, the first two that come to my mind are um, Marvel World and Star Wars World, I guess. See, I think me and you... We're going to have a disagreement about that. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't... Which one do you not want? Neither. And let me explain. <laughs> I don't think that they should be worlds. If they're going to include Marvel and Star Wars, in my opinion, they should be bonus bosses or, like, have Tony Stark help Sid or something like that. I don't think that there should be a Marvel world. You know, maybe have Darth Vader as a hidden boss like you did with Sephiroth. Oh, Okay something like that but i don't think there should be a whole dedicated world to marvel or star wars but i do get really? the idea and reason why like people would want it because you know it's freaking star wars and marvel yeah yeah and it's like the two greatest things that disney has acquired recently so it's like why not yep i mean i i see why i just i don't think it would uh -huh. work out that well personally uh -huh. you know maybe i don't know go ahead I was going to say, I could kind of see them having, like, a world design where it's kind of like the Avengers movie, you know? And Sora, Goofy, and Donald have to, like, go in there and clean house. I, I could see that, I guess. Uh-huh. I mean, when I was thinking about it, I thought that the perfect place, if you're going to have anyone from the Marvel Universe, would be have Tony Stark with Sid. You know, his world got blown away which i guess that would be all of them but he got misplaced and he would help you synthesize and you get the ultimate like iron man keyblade which has a part of his um his chest plate in it oh yeah that would be badass right because you know they have the ultimate weapon in like kingdom hearts 1 through synthesizing well that could be like this ultimate um one for kingdom hearts 3 and have it be red and yellow and have it um with the plate in the middle i just thought that would be kind of cool yeah yeah and it would be even cooler is if you made all of that DLC. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Manny! <laughs> yeah. Officially works for Capcom. <laughs> oh, gets out. Get out of here. Get, Get out of here. Right. But no, that'd be an awesome idea, though, man. Yep, yep. Um, for me, I would have to say in terms of worlds, um, going off of stuff 
like, given the popularity of it, I wouldn't be surprised if there's some kind of Frozen level. But that being said, the movie did just come out not that long ago. So, mm-hmm. probably not. Um, a movie that I would probably wouldn't be surprised if it was in it, if there was some kind of Brave world. Oh, yeah. Brave seems like a good idea for that. You know, going along, if they don't, choose some of the older Disney movies. Um, but that being said, you know, how about, what, out of all the Kingdom Hearts games, which ones have you played? I have played, uh, just one and two. I haven't played any of the remixes or like the, uh, what was it, like 365 or what was that other one? I forgot. Birth by Sleep? Yeah, Earth by Sleep or Dream Drop. Dream Drop or yeah. uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories. Yeah, yeah, just uh, one and two. Oh, you noobasaur. <laughs> I, I, well, I was limited to the PS2 at the time, so. I, I've i played Kingdom Hearts 1, 2, um, Birth by Sleep, and um, Chain of Memories. And they're really good games, all of them. And for anyone that wants to know more about this stuff, you should watch the hour-long documentary that Game Trailers put out not that long ago of the Kingdom Hearts franchise, especially if you haven't been able to play all of them. Like, I haven't been able to, so I didn't know what was going on in those DS games. You know what I mean? (laughs) So watch the documentary. It goes through all the lore, talks about everything. It's really good. Now, let me ask you this, Andrew. Like, of all the Kingdom Hearts games, like... Which are some that stuck out to you, or even one that's your favorite? Like, I personally like the story from one the most, but I also kind of like the integration of more Final Fantasy characters in two. Um, probably, I just got done playing Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD. Uh huh. So one thing before I tell you my answer, um, the ending to that game is much more sad than I realized. Oh yeah. Like I haven't played it since I was little. So, Mm -hmm. when I saw it, I'm like, oh, anyway, probably (laughs) just from everything put together, I'd have to say my favorite one I've played is Birth by Sleep. Um, Oh, really? Yes. How so? Well, the story in it is really, really good. It tells the story of the original three Keyblade wielders, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua, and how they actually influenced what happened in Kingdom Hearts 1, and how Sora, Riku... And um, Kyrie or Keyblade Masters. Did you know Kyrie hmm. is a Keyblade Master? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, it basically tells that whole story. It tells the story, the beginnings of how. Um, oh, what's his name? The main bad guy. I, oh yeah, I know what you're talking the about. Old the man. name escapes me. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of his name right now. Someone's probably yelling yeah. at us right now. God, I know. Me. Butcher. Right. Kingdom noobs. <laughs> right. Yeah. But just the overall, and there was three different separate stories from three separate different perspectives with three different endings with um, Aqua, Ventus, and um, goodness, I can't think of anything, and Terra. And I really liked it. And there were also some worlds in that one that weren't in some of the other games. Like there was a Jungle Book world, I believe. I, that could be wrong. It's been a while since I played it. And there was also online multiplayer for it. Like a, PV, hmm. a PvP mode and an, an online arena mode. And also like a, a really strange online Kingdom Hearts. Hmm. Like where you got to roll that. The first one. Oh. I, and I also do like the second one. Um, Birth by Sleep has to be my favorite. How about you, out of the two that you played, if you had to pick one, which one would you pick? If I had to pick one, it would probably be one, and I think that's, again, just because, you know, being that it was the first in the series, I felt that just the story alone was revolutionary, the gameplay itself, and, um, you know, just being introduced to the idea of you're this hero working alongside Disney characters. Um, Although the one did have some issues, like, with platforming for example and um camera angles but other than that yeah (laughs) but uh i i agree with you kingdom hearts one really hit it on the head because if you think about the concept one it's really strange and they were actually able to put 
in a game with Disney characters that still made it have a good enough story for hardcore RPG fans to really be into it. Because if you think about it, that's a really hard feat. Like, oh yeah, yeah. man. And plus, Kingdom Hearts is ridiculous if you try to get your friends to play it. Oh man, you should play Kingdom Hearts. Well, what's it about? Well, you play as this kid, and he's going along, you know, Donald and Goofy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and they're, they're like, yeah, you lost us there. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You could just stop. As soon as you said Donald, I'm out. Yeah. Like, no, hear me out. This is really good. Right? So, my question, have you seen the trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3? Oh, Yes. It does it looks beautiful it does and you know what's even better is knowing that it's legit and not some like fan made one oh, right <laughs> that like Goodness. gave you false hope you know i don't recall how many of those i saw where it was like the keyblade wars and then you see this little cgi trailer and then you find out it was either fan made or it was just a prototype well the keyblade war was something that actually happened that's actual yeah. kingdom hearts lore yeah, yeah, and I understand that. It's just more like, you know, you see those and you're like, oh, the next one's coming out, and you're like, no. Yeah, as far as I know, Kingdom Hearts 3 is supposed to release in 2015, with Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD coming out next year. And if you had a suggestion by me, Manny, pick up 2.5 HD, um, because it comes with Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, both in HD and playable. That, and I'll have to get 1.5 HD as well. 1.5 HD is good, and I only played it for the original, but in terms of gameplay, I think you could safely skip over um, Chain of Memories, or Rechain of Memories. It's very strange. Yes, yes. Having some kind of deck-building Kingdom Hearts action thing. The story in it's great, and I'll say that about every single Kingdom Hearts game. But the gameplay in that one is kind of like the black sheep of the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Yeah, I remember watching the reviews on that, and that looked kind of rough. Yeah. So one, let's just <laughs> let's say, you know what? Here's a good one for you. One more thing about it, because this one's a bit more open-ended. If you could, what magical summon would you like? Because if you looked at the summons from Kingdom Hearts One and Two, there was people from games that weren't in it. You know what I mean? Right, right, I see what you mean. So, that's much more open-ended. If you could think of a Disney character or whatever, who would you want to summon by your side? Oh, I don't know why, but for some reason, like, RoboCop is at the top of my mind, but that's clearly not not an appropriate choice. Oh yeah, that would be great. <laughs> You're coming with me, dead or alive. <laughs> <laughs> That, or maybe, like, John Rambo? I don't know. <laughs> oh, God. Have you seen anything about the new Rambo game? Yes, I saw uh, Angry Joe's review on that. That was hilarious. Oh, man. That's... That's... That... You... I'm talking about pissing on a license. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty bad. Pretty darn terrible. Um... I don't know. I... I guess you really can't go wrong with the classics, but they would be all the ones you would expect, like, you know, Mulan or the people from Tron. Maybe, like, the new Tron characters. That would be kind of interesting. That would be a pretty cool summon. Yeah. That would be a pretty cool summon. You can summon Daft Punk or something. I don't know. <laughs> right? I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go. I think that it's time for Sora to be able to summon his first Final Fantasy summon. I, oh, yeah. I don't know who, but let's say uh -huh. in this next Kingdom Hearts 3, he summons Ifrit. Oh, my God. Or just something. I don't know what. But let's go with that. Or maybe Quetzalcoatl <laughs> or... No, let's go with Ifrit. I like Ifrit. Let's just have Ifrit. Sora throw his Keyblade in the air and just have a giant Ifrit just <laughs> annihilate a bunch of Heartless. Jesus, that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be awesome. By the way, uh, Tinkerbell OP in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> yeah. Her summon is ridiculous. Alright. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. She heals you, uh -huh. and if you die, you get all, a full um, re. Uh, you get your full magic and health back. Ooh, that's nice. Yeah, she OP. You know what? I have one more question for you. I lied. 
playing the first and second one, did you ever play any of the secret boss battles? Um, you know, I don't think so, which is pretty bad, because I had a strategy guide for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you didn't face Sephiroth, or... Uh, oh wait, you know, uh, I lied. I think I did try to face him, and I got beat pretty badly. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Oh, a little bit of random fact. Did you know that um, Sephiroth is voiced by Lance Bass from NSYNC? What? No way. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just let that sink in for a moment. Yeah. Sephiroth. Just let that marinate. Lance Bass. <laughs> And sync. <laughs> bye bye bye. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess that's the end of our middle segment. Which, All right. Which brings us to my favorite segment. My favorite segment. Everyone in th- favorite segment. It's time for people, people doing do. stupid shit. Hit the music. Yo, my heard is flappy birds, and you heard that's a word. <laughs> All right. So, what you got for us, Manny? So, let me ask you, Andrew. If you were a firefighter and you were on the interstate of 805 Chula Vista, California, would you park your truck in such a way that would block the fast lane? That way it would protect you as well as impeding oncoming traffic? Well, far away from me, I can only imagine bad things happened. You guys are in California. I was thinking to ask Tommy too, but... Tommy's about... 20 minutes away from me or maybe 30 oh okay well it happens that this particular firefighter decided to use his truck as an obstacle like that because the idea was that by uh, blocking the lanes not only would it help him uh, speed up the process of the rescue because it blocks traffic but it also gives him his own protection as well as any victims who are nearby uh, unfortunately, one particular highway patrol officer didn't feel the same, and he tried to handcuff that firefighter, only to find out that it was a miscommunication on his part. So, <laughs> talk were... about people doing stupid stuff. Right, you were under arrest for saving lives, sir. Exactly. And the irony is that they're both, like, you know, normal human services kind of, you know, group. You know, they're both trying to help people save lives and protect them and what do they do right when you think about that like you see the giant it's not like someone stole the uh the fire truck right you see the fireman what's your first instinct sir um what is that doing there <laughs> i don't know it sounds to me like someone had a die hard crave for donuts and they just felt like arresting someone <laughs> oh, for blocking goodness. the lane you know what i mean you said that i remember in real over here and where I live, I saw a cop car with lights on, both doors were open, right in the middle of the street. I looked over to the right and they were both in Dunkin' Donuts. <gasps> no way. Yeah, I, we caught them. They like it was an emergency. Their lights were on, everything was in there, and they were just getting there, getting some donuts. It was amazing. <laughs> anyway, what else you got? Anyways. Us? Now, how would you feel, Andrew, if someone called you up randomly? And then they decide to threaten to not only hurt you, but also steal everything that's inside your home. Probably a little turned on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, unfortunately, this particular individual, Joseph Torres, th- did not feel the same. Um, in particular, on New Year's Day, his fiance and young son, when form with his fiance and young son, Four men barged in, threatening Torres, and as well as someone else who threatened Torres on the telephone by saying that my name is Big Eastside, and I will kill you and your family. I will go to your house. Well, long story short, Torres is a mixed martial fi- mixed martial arts fighter, and not only did he fend himself off from the intruders, but he was also able to report in the guy who um, threatened him over the phone. So. In essence, he basically sent some people to the hospital, and the person who threatened him on the phone was also arrested. Goodness gracious. 
I know. Talk about least incompetent criminals. At least do your research and know that the guy you're about to bust knows something or two about defending himself. Right. It's like, come on, yeah. That would be like the equivalent of trying to steal Liam Neeson's things. Exactly. Good point. I didn't even think about that. Like, really, <laughs> when you watch those movies, what are they trying to accomplish? Dude is in his <laughs> 60s, and I would still believe he can kick anyone's ass. Yeah, I mean, this guy trained Jedis, and... He's a god he was... in two languages? Exactly, yeah. He's Zeus. <laughs> and he's, on, a he's As Aslan? Aslan? Yeah, Aslan. He also trained freaking Batman. Yes, that too. And he's in that movie that no one talks about called Taken 2. <laughs> yeah. And he's in that upcoming movie, uh, Nonstop. Which looks where he's good. A... Yeah, it does. Anyway, seriously, why would you do that? Like, oh man, I'm going to take your stuff. Oh, that was a bad idea, sir. <laughs> like, I can only no, imagine. I don't... Mm -hmm. And I don't know how it is for you guys in California, but over here in the Midwest, and I'm sure if Corey was online, he'd agree with me, we all have, like, shotguns and pistols, whether or not it should be legal. So, so if you try to attack us, we'll shoot you, and then we'll use the castle doctrine in our defense. So, Um, no... We don't have those here. We have a dog. That's about it. A dog. Yeah, some dogs are always bats, good. Some baseball bats. A uh, I don't know. That's about it. <laughs> At least where I live, personally. I mean, people own oh, guns yeah. illegally, but you know, I'm not that gangster <laughs> for that. Yeah. Andrew's like, I don't know anything about that. I have no idea, and you just hear me <laughs> in the background. Ch -ch -ch Come here, boy. <laughs> Come here, make your daddy talk. <laughs> no, it's a, uh, it's crazy because here in Missouri we've actually had um, court cases where, um, you know, they try to use the castle doctrine in their defense, and basically uh, what that is is if people enter in your house like intruders, mm -hmm. um, you have every right to shoot them or even use deadly force in some cases. However, if they were to run out of your house and they're like, let's say, on your front yard or your backyard. It's technically not your house, so you're not supposed to shoot them or throw knives at them, but that still hasn't stopped people. So, I mean, is and it, the, wouldn't that be their and, property, though? I know, and that's actually what they say, but for people on the defense, you know, for the person who, you know, tried to intrude, they'll be like, well, no, the doctrine only defends you if you're in your, like, establishment, like the house itself, but not, like, the grounds. So oh. that's that's kind of weird, and some people are argue, well, no, the grounds are part of my property, so therefore, therefore, it is part of the establishment. Not only so. that, I I believe you lose the right for that kind of thing when you start breaking into people's homes. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's just crazy, man. It's like, and besides, what am I gonna do? Like, just you know, have a shotgun loaded and just wait for him to step through the front door and then I blast him? It's like, come on. Right, basically at that point, what you're doing is camping. You just kind of crouch yeah. behind the door and wait for him to come in. And no one likes a camper. Come on, guys. <laughs> right, I mean, come on now. Basically spawn <laughs> killing at that point. Yeah, go for the melee kill. Steal the dog tags. <laughs> have a little dignity. Come on. Jeez. Well, that pretty much sums up my two stories of people doing stupid shit. I mean, between law enforcement and rescue people running into each other, and then, of course, these guys breaking into this one dude's house. Turns out they broke in the house of Steven freaking Seagal. <laughs> right? Goodness gracious. Yeah. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I got for stupid stuff. Do you have anything, Andrew? I, I do not. I was not prepared for this. Hey, no sweat, man. I just figured I'd ask. Hey, you know, just... I'm, I'm there with you. Alright, so I guess <laughs> that brings us to our final segment, which is shoutouts. So I guess we should play Rochambeau to see who goes first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm actually kind of prepared on this one, so... Alright, you go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, shoutouts. Definitely my shoutout for this week goes to none other than an anime. In particular, it goes to one called Infinite Stratos. Now, have you heard of this one, Andrew? I, I have heard of it. Mm-hmm. Well, from first glance, when you read the description, some people will immediately be turned off the word harem. And really, this isn't far from the truth in the sense that basically the story takes place in the near future where basically um, 
the world has been introduced to like mini Gundams, like the Gundams are the size of regular people. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, though, because they're so hard to operate, only women can operate them, not men. But surprisingly enough, the hero of our story is a guy who happens to be able to operate Gundams, and and they're called Stratos. And um, the idea behind it is that he goes to this academy to learn how to operate them, but at the meantime, since he's the only guy, naturally every chicken there is going to want to get a piece of his action. So he's got to not only come off, but he's also got to be a man and learn how to operate Gundam. And it just so happens that his older sister is the head leader slash teacher of the academy. So she's always like bragging on him and, you know, pushing him to the next level. But at the same time, she's also like teasing other girls and like, yeah, you should get in on that, man. You know, so it's pretty funny. And what I really like about it is that it's the first time I've seen an anime that talks about mechs in a like a lighthearted comedic tone. And it also to me, the plot has progression by not just talking about like the mechs themselves. There's actually pretty in-depth characterization, not just with the hero, but with the other girls. So I thought it was a nice surprise. And recently I've been pretty hooked on it. So that's all I got, man. How about you? All right. As I said earlier in the show, my shout out has to go to the Kingdom Hearts documentary. It, it's seriously, it's really, really well made. Game Trailers does a great job at a ton of their videos, and it's worth your time, especially if you're someone that wants to get into it or haven't had exposure to all the different games. It explains the lore, the story, how things happened. And just it kind of clarifies a lot of the confusion to be fair kingdom hearts is a very confusing storyline um you know let's just be honest here but it clarifies a lot and it's really really well made and uh, that's all i got cool cool so uh i guess that brings us to the end of episode 61 61 getting that much closer to 69 oh party <laughs> Now, the other guys better be on this time, for at least for that one. Right? Gosh, it's like it's like it's the Andrew and Manny show. Yeah. Are we going to go? Plus, we got to get Adam on that, Adam Agro. Exactly, I agree. Yeah. So, I guess the question is, are we going for this for a, uh, a trilogy next week? We'll find out. Until next time. All right, my name has been Andrew. And I'm Manny. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.